I'm always looking through the eyes of a fish. So when you guys are looking down at a current and you're walking up to the bank, you got three sides of a river. You got your side, which everybody forgets because they walk up and pull those fish out. You got the middle and you got the other side. Usually fish are hanging on current breaks, deadfalls, shadow lines, their deeper pockets, all these things. But what are they looking for? So have you guys seen trout in a current like this mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you see them go like this and they come back? What did they do? Yeah. You sure? Watch this. See that nymph right there? So what happens is, is depending on the angle of the shadow and the sun, most of the time you see the shadow on the bottom of the thing, the fish come out and they eat the shadows. They're coming, they see the shadow of a bait coming across the bottom. So when you see a trout or a bass <laughs> yeah. like this and come back, and you haven't kicked rocks or something didn't happen, that right there is they could have had a leaf on the surface and they saw the leaf. They could have had a bug. So they're looking at shadows. Okay. Now, here's the crazy part. You guys know how to mend the lines. So you guys are fly fishing and you're doing stuff. Well, what does line do? It creates shadow. So if you don't know how to triangulate your sun mm. and understand your shadows, why do you mend lines? Well, you want to keep the straightest line from point A to B. You want to be able to have the right drill. You want to do all this stuff, right? Why do I mend a line? Because I don't want the shadow crossing the eyes of the fish before that shadow and that bigness. Okay. Because if you ever see a fish sit there and you're stripping or you're trying to mend a line, and then you see that, they're swimming away, and the sun's over here, the shadow of that line just crossed the it's eyes of the fish and it thought it was a bird wing or something, they're out of there. Why does fluorocarbon work better? It doesn't yeah. create as big a shadow. Okay. So, understanding the drift, sun angles, shadows, then you're sitting there and going, okay, if the sun's here, that means my bait, shadow, at an angle like this, is going to cross the eyes and the fish is going to see it before the bait does, right? Mm. So if I'm sitting there and there's the shadow going across the bottom at this angle, and you see the fish come out like this, and all of a sudden now here comes your bait and your line hasn't crossed the eyes and you see the fish come up and hit your bait, you've seen it all the time, but you haven't put one and one together to understand that there's always this cause and effect. Mm -hmm. So shadow lines, shadows of the baits, bait placement, and then action. You know, this right here, this, this new flutter nymph for right, fish lab, I mean, how many times have you set in a current pocket or a deep hole and you see the fish sitting there? And there's a couple things that you always think about. Dead things or overpower things drift, live things yeah. swim. So when you have something kick and there's too much power in the current, you'll get things to roll. That's why you come up and let it roll down. Mm. When you have anything that's under power, like little bait fish and everything else, you'll see them coming up current. So you gotta understand what's dead versus live and what has power over power of the current you're fishing. You can literally put that flutter nymph on a drop shot in a pocket on a seam of the front end of the current right in front of a fish. So if you see a big fish there, get in front of it, put your rod out there, pull the bait, on a drop shot, that thing's gonna swim in front of them and not move. And what you do is all you have to do is drop a rod tip down, and that thing's gonna come over and touch their nose. I've caught some of my biggest trout in the Sierras. Guys are sitting there going, man, there's a five, six pounder in the creek, no one will catch it. I'll catch it in five minutes. No, you can't. I, I bet, 10 guys on both sides. I walk out in the middle of the creek, 10, 15 feet in front of the fish, I kick over a couple rocks to get dirt going, I take my bait, I throw it, I let it drift right in front of the trout, it's sitting there, it doesn't want to eat, and I touch its nose and it goes, and eats it, I catch it, and I take everybody's money. So understanding how to position things and what you're doing will change it. So there's a little food for thought over here at the BBZ and Fish Lab.